It's Lori Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And clearly I am in my courtyard garden about to tackle the clamshell planter that I have been promising you for months. Every time we do a walkabout Wednesday, I point it out and say, well, that needs reworked. And then I never take the time to rework it. So guess what? We're going to now. I would wager that every single one of you has at least one pot or container in your yard that could use revamping. That's a hot mess. Now, some of you might look at this and go, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I wouldn't change a thing. Well, okay, you know, art is subjective. But for me, what I don't like is all the legginess. See all these stems? When I look down on it from the top, I see dirt. This um bromeliad was really really pretty in here for a long time for like years but it got really fried this last summer uh so i'm gonna take the bromeliad out and i'm gonna plant it in the backyard in the shade where i think it's going to do a lot better see that's another thing this doesn't look good here because this isn't the right place it gets too hot for this plant but the plant is healthy it's just struggling and sunburnt it's not dead or dying so if you have that happening where you've got a plant and it's just I call it pouting not living not dying just kind of barely hanging on try moving it to another place in the yard where the conditions are a little more favorable where it's a little shadier or a little sunnier depending on what's going on with the plant so I am very um, aggressively going to be taking things out of this clamshell and evaluating each of the plants that I pull out. I'm going to look at and go, do I want to salvage this or not? This is a really cute little aloe hybrid. You can see that it's got some deciduated leaves. Another thing, if you think this plant is, is dying or you're worried about it, don't. Because you'll know that all of the damage is on the bottom leaves. All of the new growth is just dandy. So what this tells me is these leaves are just old and they're ready to fall off. So when you start cutting or pulling off those old leaves, though, you have to, you know, really consider what you're left with. And if you're not left with enough, you might want to just pitch it. But this is a cute, really stressed little cutting. So I think I'm going to hold on to it. It's very interesting. I'll set that aside. These sedums have a tendency to get really, really leggy with age. And in some presentations, I don't have a problem with that. I kind of like the old look of it. But I want this clamshell to be tight and compact. So I'm going to cut this about right here. And then I will reset this piece back into my arrangement. I'm not going to wait for this wound to harden or callous because I live in San Diego, so I don't have to. If you live in climates that are more hostile towards succulents, you'll want to take your cuttings, put them in a box, stick them in the garage, wait a week for that to harden off and callous before you stick them back in soil. Here is a lattice mythianthus. I love this plant. Bear paw, kitten paw, it's so soft. Uh, that's another one. I'm just not... I'm not feeling all that leggy growth. So that's another one. I'm just going to cut a piece that I can stick like a candle in a birthday cake right back in the ground. This is so rewarding and it's so fun. Uh, a little Aeonium Kiwi. Get rid of those stems. Get rid of that trunk. Here's a Senecio. Fun, fun, fun. I'm working toward this bromeliad. I mean, it's really rooted itself in here, too. Oh, and this soil that is in the clamshell, you know, I could take the whole thing out. See that? That would probably be the smarter thing to do. So let's do that. This is a real clam shell, too. It's super heavy. Okay, I'm just going to pull the whole thing out like that. It's going to be, look at that. It's so funny. Look at <laughs> that might be an indication that we need to start with some fresh soil. I think this is the definition of root bound. And clean it out a little bit. 
Now you'll also note that there is no drainage in this clamshell. I wasn't about to try drill holes in this for fear of it cracking. But, you know, I don't know. It's been here in my yard for at least eight years, at least. And I haven't had a problem with water pooling in it or the, the succulents complaining at all. So it hasn't been an issue for me. You know, here's a clump of plants. Again, just leggy and look at, see all those air roots. I don't need any of that in my life. So I'm gonna decide which of these little cuties I wanna re restage and which ones I might wanna move over to the Garden of Death. Ugh, oh, that's a pretty little sedum. Okay, so I have pulled out and separated the stuff that I want to replant in here, the stuff that I want to move over into the Garden of Death to regenerate and get its legs again, and the things that I want to transplant into, you know, like the bromeliad that I want to put in a shady spot in the garden. So now I am just pre putting fresh soil in here. Here in San Diego, it doesn't matter really what kind of dirt you use as long as it, you know, as long as it, it's, it drains. And this is dirt that was left over from some uh, potted arrangements. So it's got a lot of, you know, the little white um, perlite in it. Uh, it's got, I can feel some moss in it. You know, it's really nice and loamy. Um, I recommend any good potting soil for pots. Uh, doesn't have to be cactus and succulent specific, unless you live in a place with harsher conditions, and then I do recommend that you get a specific soil. Okay, so here's where the fun begins. We are going to load up our, in this case, shell with some dirt, soil, uh, this has a natural downslope to it, so I'm working with that. And there's some rocks in this too, because I, I took this like literally right out of the ground in the back. Um, so I'll just pick those out and decide where I'm going to start. Now, you know me, I'm all about starting with your thrillers first, no matter whether you're planting in the ground or whether you're planting in a pot. Um, always the most striking plant goes in first. So in this particular arrangement, I really, really love this aloe. I don't know what it is. It's a hybrid, um, but it's really, really well stressed. It stays small. It's been very, very happy in here for a really long time. So where I had the bromeliad before, always slightly left or right of center. I'm just gonna stick that in there. Remember what I always say, if your succulent stands up, you've done your job. So there we go. Another thing that I really like is this little aloe, which, you know, is very, very similar to this. Um, it's a striata as well, but it does, the teeth are orange and these teeth are white. So I don't think they've got the same dad, but they probably have the same mom. And I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna pull this leaf apart and I'm gonna tuck this one in right up next to it. Succulents love a little good root competition. So do not be afraid. If you are blessed to have a lot of material, use it and cram these plants together because they are so easy to manipulate. If they get to be too overgrown like this, like this arrangement was, you saw what we did. We just pulled it all out, cut it up and start it over. Now, I have some Echeveria Mexican Snowball that I got from my son, John and Marianne, bought their first house up in Claremont with an E, California, which is in LA County. We don't really see this plant here in San Diego very much, but it loves a little protection from the sun. So if you've got a semi-shady spot, um, great. This plant will be very, very happy. I'm gonna plant the Mexican snowball more toward the back of my arrangement to protect it from the hottest part of the day. Also, 
recovered some tillandsia. Now, tillandsia is an air plant. These are plants that you can put, you know, in vertical arrangements. They don't need soil to thrive. But guess what I learned strictly by accident? They'll, they'll grow in soil. So I had them, I, I had put a couple of little pieces in here and look at how they have grown in this arrangement. You can see they've thrown off roots. Um, so don't be afraid to plant tillandsias in the dirt if you are so inclined. I think it's just a really, really pretty addition in here. Look at that texture. And it's, it's just, I'm setting them on top of the dirt and that's fine, they're air plants, it doesn't matter. And I can make that as thick as I want. So I can't really see what I'm doing, um, but I'm hoping that this is looking good. Now, I found this in my backyard. If you could tell me in the comments, if any of you know what this is, it's clearly some sort of ground cover. I've not worked with it before. Uh, it's got little yellow flowers on it and purple stems, but it's looking really good and really healthy. So I thought that I would use it in the clamshell as my spiller. So I'm gonna remove a lot of the soil because I don't need it, you know, and as much of the root ball as you want. You know, this is kind of shallow, so I don't need all of this dirt and root. I could even break this plant in half if I wanted to, but I wanna use all of it, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna shake off a lot of that dirt. Shake, 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 okay. All right, now, now that I've removed, you know, most of the dirt and and roots, I'll be able to tuck it in. And I wanna put it down at the end of my arrangement because the idea is that the eye is gonna go high down to low since this is the top of the shell and it curves downward. So I want something low and ground covery right here to spill over the side. Um, so yeah, hope, uh, hope that's looking good for you. Now, here is a cotyledon mint truffles that has, it weighs like, no exaggeration, at least two pounds. This thing has been sitting in this can in the garden over by the grapefruit tree in the backyard for six months, maybe. The poor thing. I keep thinking I'm gonna pull it into a project and then I just forget it's there. So it's been, it has been orphaned. I'm expecting that it is gonna be very, very root bound and it is. So you know what? My experience with this plant is that it is tough as nails, not unlike its, its friend, the jade. So I think I'm just gonna use it as cuttings. I'm just gonna cut pieces of this off to use in this arrangement. Look at how hard those stems are. This is gonna thrive. And you know what? I don't want it to get big and leggy in here anyway. So that's another benefit of working with cuttings is it retains the size of the plant. And as a designer, not a collector, but as a designer, I want this arrangement to stay looking like it is right now for as long as possible, right? I'm not in any hurry for it to grow. So that's just another benefit of working with cuttings. Okay, I just don't see the need of having this whole giant plant in this arrangement. So I will use some of it, and the rest that I don't use, I can put somewhere else. I can put it in my gutters. I can pop it into other arrangements around the yard that might be looking a little, a little leggy or a little misshapen, but not so bad that I need to completely redo them. You know, you can just pop plants in uh, to fluff up an arrangement, if you will. So because this is a cutting and I know it's going to take a while to reroot and start growing, I'm going to feel pretty confident sticking it anywhere I want in here. I'm not gonna worry about it growing taller than the aloes or overtaking the tillandsias because I know it's gonna be a hot minute before this thing does anything. It's just gonna sit here just like this and take at least six weeks to two months to throw off any roots. So how fun is this, right? And also, you know, working with cuttings is great in situations like this, you know, where you've got a plant and you can see dirt I feel like this is, you know, a little flat visually. I might want to fluff it up visually a little bit so I can take my clipper. I can make a little divot right there, a little hole, and I can stick a plant right there. Ha, love it. Looks like it's been there for years. Okay, now 
Let's throw in some more of our Mexican snowball. Oh, geez, this plant is so pretty. Um, I'm just gonna tuck some more of these rosettes hither and yon. So those of you that are gardening in zones one through eight B, probably aren't doing much gardening right now, are you? It's the middle of February. So I hope that my videos, uh, you're able to live vicariously through me a little bit. Um, just wanna give you a lot of encouragement. And remember, you'll be out in your gardens before you know it, I promise. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning all the dead leaves off. But you can kind of see how this Mexican snowball throws off her pups. She grows little branches off of the main trunk. And that's where the babies go. So it's kind of cool. Oops, that one broke, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. But, um, you know, it's really good, too, when you're reworking your arrangements to check for insects, bugs, pests, diseases. Um, don't see a darn thing. If I did, I might treat with a little insecticidal soap. Uh, but everything looks really good. Let's put this right here. Does that look cute? Kind of in between those, what are these little divots? Yeah, I want things that are gonna grow, stay low and be very focal at the edges of my arrangement. So what have I got? Oh yeah, I've still got some color. These wonderful sedums that I pulled out that are you know, gonna give me some good color because this is looking pretty greenish blue, isn't it? But that's kind of the way it is at this time of year too. Everything kind of reverts back to green. Um, I did find some Crassula Argentia Sunset in the side yard that had a little bit of color starting on it. So I'm gonna tuck it in too, just for texture and you know, a little pop of color. I wanna make sure that I don't lose these visually by tucking them into the middle where they're just gonna get covered over and lost. I'm gonna want these more in the front, but I'm not at the front yet. And that's another issue when you are doing arrangements. Sometimes you write to me in a panic. You say, I ran out of plants because you've got all this great stuff going in the middle and then you don't have anything at the edges of your arrangements because you've used all the small stuff too soon. So resist the temptation. Keep working with, with your bigger stuff. I've got the Tillandsia over here. Let's move some more in right there. You know, the Tillandsia is really making a statement in this arrangement, so I want three elements of it. Um, remember, always work in ones, threes, and fives. So now we have, I don't want it to look like pom-poms. There we go. Yeah, we need to pull some in here down at this edge. Good, so one, two, three. Very nice. And I've got, well, I don't know, this noblest. This looks a little ratty. See, it's got tip burn. I can clip off the burnt tips and then make a decision. How do I like it now? Better, as long as it's not gonna be a standalone and it's just gonna be something that'll kind of fluff up the, the space, uh, I'll use it. And I see when I look down on this arrangement, I see dirt right there. So I'll tuck it right in here. That's great, okay. Oh, here's a little Fred Ives, that's a cutie. Let's tuck the Fred Ives right here where it can be enjoyed and seen. Now I've got some area in the back that I'm gonna pop in some more of the cotyledon. I'm looking more for fillers in the back and things that I know are going to get you know, taller like the jade. Also, almost forgot, I brought some cuttings from the back garden of Ovada. This is Crassula Ovada. It's another type of jade. And it's <laughs> these cuttings have been over there for months too, but I thought it looked pretty, pretty healthy. So I can cut off some pieces of it, of the larger pieces. And I can tuck those back here too, behind this aloe, knowing that they're gonna take a minute to root. So they'll stay pretty much this size. 
for the next few months. Remember too, we wanna keep moving down. We don't wanna put tall things right here. We wanna keep things moving down the ladder. So this looks like a good place for another little Mexican snowball. Oh, here's another little Talanzia. So I can flush out this one a little bit. Very good. What else do I have over here? Oh, I've got another little, I've got another little aloe cutting. I don't like that long stem. It's completely unnecessary, so I'm just gonna cut that off. I've got one here, so let's put this one right here. Okay, and sometimes, you know, you want to plant under the skirts of things. So this little cotyledon, when it does root, it's gonna start to grow this way. So I wanna give a little snowball a chance to grow underneath too. So this will throw off babies this way, which will be really cute. This will continue to get a little bigger and then it'll hide the trunk when that starts of that little cotyledon. I've still got this space right here. I want to do, you know, pretty interesting things there. Here's um, a, a sedum pacophyllum. This is just a stone crop. Uh, but I like this plant when stressed, it turns quite pink, which is really pretty. It can get a little leggy and scrubby looking. So I really like working with this one in my gutters and other tight potted arrangements so I can keep it under control. And I can pop these in here like that and then let's do some more of the cotyledon right here and here there we go Ooh, here's some more of that really really pretty uh, orange sedum which will continue to pull more color as the weather continues to get chillier even here in san diego for the next month, we could have some light frost. Uh, temperatures could drop it down into the 40s overnight. There's that risk uh, for the next, you know, about 30 days. Um, but because this is planted so close to the house and it'll get this radiant heat, I don't worry about it. This color would be super duper here amongst all this green. You may ask, well, gosh, Laura, is that plant even hitting the soil? No, probably isn't. But have you ever thrown a cutting off to the side and forgotten about it? And lo and behold, you go out a month later and it's starting to throw off little roots just in the air. These plants have a way of just figuring it out. Okay, what else have I got to work with here? Oh, that's kind of neat. That's a little cute little fat plant. Tuck that in right here. And these snowballs are really coming in very, very handy, along with my pieces of Crassula argentea. And here's another one of those kitten paws. Oh, that feels so good. That's such a fun plant to touch. All right, yeah, now I'm just filling in with my little cutesies. When you come to my door, and you're standing here, you'll be looking down on this arrangement. So it needs to look good from 360 degrees. So I, that's why I'm working on it this way so that I can see what it looks like looking down into it. And I don't want to see any dirt. That's where some of these, like these Aeonium Kiwis come in super handy because the stems are so tough, you know, and they stand up, they don't flop. And set that right there. And, you know, I know I've said this a zillion times, but this is literally like putting candles in a birthday cake. And it is the most rewarding thing you will ever do. So when you think you are done, you're not. Add more plants. Because another thing too, when working with cuttings, these plants are gonna shrink up a little bit because the way they're going to establish a new root system is by using the water and nutrients that they've stored in their leaves and stems to create new roots. So they may shrivel a little bit. Therefore, we wanna pack the plants in as tight as humanly possible to allow 
for a little shrivel. And you know what? As I go, if I find something neat, you know, as I'm walking down the street or I have a little cute little cutesy thing, you know, from a project leftover, I'm not going to hesitate to just tuck it in and have some fun. So these arrangements can always be manipulated and messed with and, and tweaked. Um, succulents are so fun and so forgiving. I don't know, Greg, what do you think from your perspective? Does that look good? I can't see. I'm doing this backwards. Do you see any gaps? Any areas where I need to put a plant? No, you look good. Looks good? Okay, so I'm going to leave this sit here for the next, well, since it is the middle of February, for at least a month, and I'm not going to put any water on it or do anything. We might get a little bit of rain, uh, but I, you know, who knows. If we would were to get a deluge, you know, I would cover it. I would pull it out of harm's way since there's no drainage, but that's, that's not likely. Um, so I'll leave it at least a month. That'll give the soil a chance to dry out thoroughly, give a chance for all of the, uh, the wounds to heal and callus, give it a chance to start throwing off some baby roots. As far as the plants that still have roots, no worries. Like I said, they're going to use the water from their leaves and stems to support themselves until, until I water this again. And yeah, you know, I, I mean, there's no point in watering plants that don't have any roots. How are they supposed to intake it? Right? So you'll probably have questions. Um, you know, I never know how much sense I'm making, so please don't hesitate to comment if, uh, if you've got a burning question. I do my very best to answer as many of the questions as I possibly can. If you would like me to put my eyes on your hot mess, I'm now doing virtual consulting. It's been a blast. I'm blowing up, uh, getting requests from literally all over the world. So if you have internet access, you and I can do this together. I can walk you through a, a pot of arrangements. I can walk you through your inside plants. I can walk you through your design spaces outside. Whatever you need, I am at your disposal. So be sure to request a consultation via my website at designforserenity.com. And I'll give you all the, uh, all the deets about that. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Thank you for liking this video. Um, I love you all so much. It's so good to be back in action. And this is Laura Eubanks in her courtyard with the beloved clamshell and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys. <laughs>